Okay, uh, so let's start uh, today's webinar. Um, thank you very much uh, for today joining the webinar. Um, today, uh, we have two speakers. The, uh, I'm Yuki Tamura in charge of the agriculture uh, solutions in Sony. So I'm going to introduce the Sony Smart Agriculture Solution, particularly the, uh, the coming update version 2.1. And the, uh, we have a speaker, Mr. Michael Ott uh, from Rantizo, and he is going to talk about the fast grain to minimize the risk of the crop damage. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about the total solution to monitor and evaluate the crop using the Sony Smart Agriculture Solutions and taking an action uh, with the drone spraying technologies. Um, and the key concept is the, to achieve this the survey and action within one day. Uh, it's very quick decision and a very quick action protecting the damage being spread uh, over the field. So a couple of the housekeeping things before we start. So this webinar is recorded. So once the archive is ready, uh, you will have the link of the uh, watching this video archive. The second point is the, so we are going to have the um, question and answer uh, and the at the right hand on your screen, uh, there is a go to webinar panel. And here you can type in the text and the, we will uh, read up your questions uh, at the end of the session uh, we, we, when we have this uh, question and answer session and then the answer uh, your questions. So please type in your questions uh, on the GoToWebinar panel. The third is the, we are going to have some quick poll and also the post webinar survey to make this the webinar a little bit more interactive. Um, so uh, please, uh, the uh, just um, quick some of the uh, the uh, questions the uh, to give us the feedback. So that's the um, housekeeping things, and so let's start the first part of the presentation. So smart agriculture solution introduction. Um, now to start. This session, uh, I'd like to give uh, ask you one thing, the just quick question. Um, so here, um, the question is: Do you use drones for your operations? Um, would you please feedback us the just click in either yes or no. Um, thank you very much for your feedback. And now I close the poll and the, uh, let me share the results. Um, so here, uh, yes, half people um, have already used the drones and how people are not. Um, okay, so today we are uh, going to talk about this um, drone solution, but there's uh, uh, the, uh, some parts, the, uh, the, uh, the benefit of using the drone uh, technologies, and some part is more like a practical uh, the, uh, point. Uh, what would be the, the key point of using the drone thing? So, so I hope that we um, address the both of your uh, the operational uh, needs. Okay, um, so let's start the Sony part. The, so um, the Sony Smart Agriculture Solution is all about this drone-based remote sensing solution, and we hear uh, from the sorry. So uh, we hear uh, from this industry, uh, the people uh, who use a drone or who are uh, willing, to the, willing to use the drones, uh, what was the pain point of this drone remote sensing operations? And the, this is the um, 
typical workflow of the drone remote sensing. So fly the drones, making the map, and then the identify the troubles, and then grant through things um, for identification of the cause of the deterioration of the field and making action plans and execute the action. So the some of the pain points are uh, listed uh, for this operation. One is the uh, you need to wait um, some time to have your data ready for your further analytics. Uh, typically, uh, when you fly the drones and then you make a uh, flight map, uh, NDVI, RGB, uh, it takes some hours or sometimes but worse uh, but cases, the days uh, of the time. And, but the, when you are in the field, you like to have that ready at the edge of the field. Um, to take an action uh, right at the edge of the field. So this is one of the uh, pain points, a long lead time of the data. And the, the second point is the lack of the intuitive diagnostic tools. Uh, even you have the data, uh, you, if you don't have the uh, quick, easy uh, analytics tools, uh, you cannot fully utilize the data. So this is the second point. And the uh, after uh, that, uh, you're uh, making a grant through things and then they'll make a prescription and execute the operations. Uh, the, this is also where the system is divided and things, so you cannot take a quick action. So those are the points we observe the challenge for the drone remote sensing operation. And the, our uh, solution concept is uh, to challenge to solve this, uh, the uh, problem and the uh, concept is decision making in the field leveraging quick action. So the key three features are fast teaching in field offline operations. This solution, uh, you fly the drones and the, you can operate all these the data generation, the analytics uh, in the field uh, under this completely offline um, environment. You don't need to rely on the internet for this operation. So that's the uh, the first part. And then this, the stitching uh, takes the uh, a couple of minutes for the NDVI stitching for over this 100 acres field. And then the uh, additionally RGB stitching, maybe the seven eight minutes uh, are required. So within minutes, you will have the data ready. After the data is ready, uh, you will have some uh, field analytics tool, uh, which I'm going to show you at the demonstration. Uh, you will have this histogram adjustment uh, or quick assessment tool of the field damage. And the, also uh, in case of this the emergent stage, then the, you will ha you have this sun count analytics capability. And the third point is the easy operation. Uh, one of the demonstration I'm going to show you today is the making the prescription uh, data uh, from the latest NDVI information. Uh, so this uh, is um, helping the uh, streamline of the data capture to make an action plan, hand it over to execute the action such as the drone spraying uh, provided by Rantizo. So to achieve this the, uh, concept, we have products, the multi-spectral cameras mounted on the drones, and the software is called Fast Field Analyzer, uh, which um, can stitch the images and then the, uh, make some analytics. This solution can be utilized throughout the season. And the, uh, right now, I think we are in the uh, phase of the sound count uh, operation. And then throughout the season, uh, the, uh, we need to fight against this the disease or uh, pests and things. Uh, so crop protection application is one of the uh, key use case, uh, which we are going to introduce today. Now, starting from just quickly talking about this sound uh, count. So we are proposing this drone-based uh, sound counting uh, rather than this conventional the manual, uh, the counting operation. So the, with the drones, uh, you can cover the wider areas and then the hundreds of sampling points. 
and it's a mechanically sampling. So it's not like a soil grid sampling things. It's unbiased data. So you will have through this, the extensiveness of the um, variety of the fields and you can make fair judgment. So the solution uh, of the stun count is a similar concept. It works completely at the edge of the field. So you fly the drones, the power flight, you can fly like 100 acres or 120 acres. And the, with the sampling point images, uh, the uh, fast fin analyzers, uh, the automatically count the sound and the provide this, the um, information uh, for your replant uh, judgment. So you fly the drones and the, uh, the first, uh, after the flight, uh, first point is the importing the data is an accounting. And as you can see, this the um, fast feed analyzer automatically counts the sound. And then after the counting the sound, uh, this is the field. And for through this, the green, um, the transparency, you will see the dot there. Uh, so that dot is a sampling point. And then the, from this sampling point, you make the grid. And the, uh, based on this grid map, you can define this zoning uh, like this. And the, uh, in the end, you can maybe decide only maybe this red part to be replanted if necessary. Uh, and then you will have all these stats. So red part, what's the acre size, what's the populations, what's the emergence rate. So those information is ready for you uh, two, three minutes after the flight. Uh, the um, at the edge of the field. We just found this the uh, one of our customers using this drone stand count, and the, they they use two systems, and then they um, fly the orchid day and a half. They uh, cover this 3,750 acres of the field of the stand count, whole field information. So uh, that's. Um, how our system can scale. And they use, I think it's the Phantom 4 through this um, pictures. Uh, if you use the uh, more enterprise, the drones, you can even uh, cover further larger coverage per day. So it's very scalable system. Now, uh, the I'd like to uh, update the Fast field analyzer version 2.1, which is coming at the end of this month. One of the key updates of this version 2.1 is uh, the prescription capability. So, as uh, we recall, these are the drone remote sensing operation. And now, fast field analyzer can cover making the data and the analyzing the data. Uh, but the, um, we need to hand it over this uh, information to the farm manage management software to make a prescription um, the uh, plan. Now with the version 2.1, uh, we are going to have the simple uh, prescription the, uh, tools uh, which you can utilize uh, at the edge of the field, make an action plan uh, through this fast field analyzer. And this is the, uh, uh, we, we developed this because the, uh, a lot of our customer ask for um, this, the capability um, because they drive to their, or if you're agronomist, uh, you drive to your grower's field, maybe one hour or sometimes two hours. Um, and then when you get there, uh, obviously you like to discuss uh, with your growers face-to-face -face. and at the face-to-face -face meeting, uh, you like to show what the prescription to be based on the latest uh, scouting uh, operation. And then the, uh, with that capability, uh, the fast field analyzer can cover uh, this uh, making the action plan. And then this is going to be handed over to execute the action such as drone remote uh, drone spraying. So 
brief overview of this prescription feature. It's, um, so you can uh, compare uh, the data side by side, NDVI and external data like soil mapping. And you can generate the grid zone map uh, based on latest uh, flight result. And you can configure uh, application rate once you define the zone like this. So um, the zone by zone, you can define the application rate. And you can export this uh, information to the shape file. And also you can uh, generate the prescription report. So that's a brief overview of this prescription features. And I'd like to show you a quick demonstration. Now, this is the uh, GUI of the fast field analyzer. So you start the fast field analyzer, you have this screen. And I have a um, predefined farm here. And this farm has a two fields. And when I select this field, then uh, you have the event here, which is a flight event. So I have several flight events here. And the uh, so starting from the sun count, and the, this is mid season. What last year the season uh, was very slow or the late. Uh, so this is before nitrogen application. This is after nitrogen application. Now, what I like to show you is how to generate the prescription uh, from this latest NDVI flight uh, result. So once you the images, you have this NDVI uh, map. And the, uh, we are assuming the case, so this part of the field, um, let's see, this the um, northeast part of the field is damaged by some pesticide. Sorry, some pest. And the uh, so if first step is the generate the grid map out of this the NDVI image. So now you have this grid map and you can change this grid map to being where the class or something like a 15 or today we make it simple, just maybe three. Class. Now you can see uh, the grid is um, available here with the three class. Once you're happy with that, then you click the prescription list here. And on this screen, you can edit the prescription, uh, the uh, planning. So you can actually change. So here on this area, you know, with the scouting, uh, the pest damage there. So maybe you apply these areas um, a little bit larger. And you know this, the other areas, okay, these are the field edge. So it's not very big deal. It's not red areas things. It's just only because of the edge of the field uh, have the damage. And the, um, if the, the derivation is a very small minor, and you maybe change it uh, to make this um, application simply uh, and quick. So you can adjust uh, those things uh, with these tools um, on the screen, depending on what your application controller capability, uh, you adjust this the zoning. And then, Can type in the information here, the so protection liquid. We can put some cost per unit or default application rate here. Uh, now you have three zones, and you can apply maybe only for this red part, you apply uh, some pesticide. And then once you're happy, uh, then uh, you click OK.
then uh, you have now prescription file like this. Let's just compare this with the original NDVI. So from this NDVI latest information, you can uh, quickly in a minute, in a couple of minutes, you can quickly generate this prescription file at the edge of the field. And then you can just discuss with your growers uh, what's about this plan. And if you are not uh, the face face in the in the face face meeting, you can actually generate the report. And here you can also include some of the external data sources. Let me just show you this. So here, for example, I have some soil data of this field. Let me see. Soil types. Well, there is not so much variety of the um, the soil type here, uh, but you can import this the soil information or the uh, other external shape file information uh, in this system, and you can generate the report with that information. Then now you can quickly generate this uh, prescription report. So this is the NDVI grid, and then this is the prescription files. And then you have this the reference information, why you define areas and rate. And if you are uh, providing services to growers, then the, uh, you can uh, place your brand logo uh, on the report. So you can just quickly send this in, uh, the information uh, by email. Also, uh, you can export uh, this prescription file as a shape file. And the, uh, once you export, then you can share uh, with the uh, application technology uh, such as drone spraying or they see uh, other spray boomers and those things. So that's the brief demonstration of this the uh, prescription uh, capability, which is coming uh, at the end of this month. So it should be ready for uh, the nitrogen applications and some other crop protection application this season. All right, so that's it's uh, the from Sony's side, and then I'd like to hand it over to Michael for his presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, excited to be able to talk to you about what we're doing in terms of drone spraying with Rantizo. And a lot of people say that drone spraying is the future of agriculture, and we argue that they're wrong, that drone spraying is the present of agriculture, because at Rantizo, We've got operators in multiple states spraying legally, on label, with insurance, and all the permits that are needed. We're spraying in corn, soybeans, berries, vineyards, hemp, uh, you name it, lots of, lots of different applications. Our target market is custom applicators because they treat 70% of the U.S. cropland. We've talked to them extensively as we've designed our, our solution. And the thing that they're really concerned about is labor availability, CapEx, and then employee safety. And we're able to address all of those issues with the Rantizo systems. Now, there's a lot of problems with agriculture between coronavirus and, and everything else. Uh, what we have seen is that something as simple as rain causes a lot of issues. So here is a, a, a rainy situation, caused some mud. You've got $200,000 tractor pulling out a $400,000 spraying. That's $600,000 of equipment not working simply because it rained. Uh, in Iowa City today, I actually was woken up by a rainstorm about 6.45 this morning. And um, it rained really, really hard. 
We had a, an operator in town. He wanted to do some testing. We were out flying at nine o'clock today. So when it rains really hard, we can still go go spray in the field, you know, just a couple hours later as soon as that rain gets is done. Uh, here's a good example of this. This is a cannabis spray where you can see how muddy that field is. And in this situation, the, the Rantizo drone was the only solution that worked. It was too muddy for a tractor, too close to an airport for a plane, and it was an insecticide that makes your lips go numb. So none of the employees would backpack spray it. So we brought in the drone sprayer and did that. We're currently spraying around 14 acres per hour. Uh, that's with our booms and at, at, at a three gallon per acre rate. In the next few weeks, we're rolling out our mix and fill system. That'll do autonomous loading, which will reload the drone faster so it spends less time on the ground. We plan to be swarming by the end of the summer legally, uh, and that'll get us around 60 acres an hour, which will be about what a tractor does. Uh, a day like today, tractors did zero. We were out spraying this morning, so we're already ahead of them in certain instances. With future innovations, we'll be up around 100 acres per hour. And like uh, you was pointing out, uh, when you have an NDVI image of a field, you can understand where the problems are. Say that this is insect one, insect two, and weed one. Uh, the typical strategy would just put a couple insecticides and an herbicide in the in the hopper and spray the entire thing. So you're spraying this area that doesn't need it, you're spraying that area that doesn't need it, and you're wasting a bunch of chemical. What we can do is go right out and spray just in those locations. And I'll walk you through an example of that. This was an area in, uh, in Eastern Iowa where the farmer knew something was wrong. He didn't know exactly what it was, and we did some imagery and understood that there was a micronutrient deficiency that was causing that yellow streaking on the leaves that you see. Discovered that it was a copper deficiency, and you need copper to in order to in order to uh, more properly utilize nitrogen. So re reduction of copper causes reduced yield. So what we were able to show in some testing was that we increased copper uh, uptake by about 50%, going from eight parts per million to 12. But most importantly, in those soybeans, we saw a 2.6% yield increase. So the area that was treated with the copper had a 2.6% yield increase. The same area that was treated but didn't have the copper in it had no yield increase. And if we put the copper down in a part of the field that didn't need it, there was no yield increase. So we were able to map out the problem, precisely apply what, it, what was needed, and then get a quantifiable yield increase there, which is, is really important. And partnerships like this and like what we're doing with Sony are really important so we can get out there and be quick in the field and responsive to situations so you don't have yield loss. Mantizo does have a lot of other things that we're doing. Uh, we're the first and only company that's able to pollinate corn from a drone. We've partnered with a preserved pollen company and uh, we're actually able to use RTK technology and go out and precisely pollinate just what needs to be uh, what, what is desired. So that's a pretty exciting thing that we did last year and we're rolling out more for this year. Uh, also with the coronavirus, we have had a, a need for sanitization. So we can actually use our drones in stadiums, in public parks, uh, inside a warehouse, inside some big arena, and we can use the drone to spray a sanitizing chemical that'll kill the coronavirus and 99.999% of other viruses and bacteria. Uh, we can do it with a traditional chemical or with an organic, and then we'll offer pricing by per square foot if it's a warehouse or per thousand seats if it's a, it's a basketball stadium or a football stadium, something like that. So we're just rolling this sanitization out and uh, have had a lot of enthusiasm there. We're pretty excited about that. So the way our business model works is it's a hardware and SaaS, and I say the SaaS with an asterisk because that's spraying as a service. So we're selling our drones for 20 to 25,000, a mix and fill and a trailer. The takeaway on this is if you buy a three drone system all fully kitted out, you're gonna be about $100,000. That's about a quarter of the price of a traditional, you know, 400, $450,000 spray system that you'd buy. Uh, we do support and training, and then we help with all the, the permitting, billing, and insurance. And with that, we capture some recurring revenue for our contractors that are out spraying. We capture a third of the revenue that's out there. 
So I'll walk through a little bit of our platform uh, just so you can see kind of where we are. We've got a drone with a boom. Uh, it sprays about a 14 foot, a 20 foot swath from a 14 foot boom. This is entirely autonomous. We program everything out there. So the drone is actually flying itself. The operator legally has to hold the controller, but they're not actually flying the drone. That'll get you a 14 acre per hour uh, application uh, coverage. That's at a three gallon per acre rate. Uh, we'll change out batteries and we've got that all, all the entire workflow figured out and worked through that's, uh, that's significantly better than, than uh, many that are out in the field. And that's also below 55 pounds, so we can train anyone to do it. Uh, we've done a lot of dry applications, so we can do cover crop seeds. Uh, an interesting thing that happened last year when it was so rainy, there were some wet spots in fields. So uh, this is where a farmer had planted it, it had washed out. Uh, they were getting some weed growth there that they wanted to uh, have, have beneficial uh, crops be able to um, to be able to suppress that weed a little bit, and then also lock in the nutrients that they had already deployed in that field. So we mapped out the areas that were uh, afflicted from the from the the flooding, and then just dropped the cover crop seeds in in the middle of the in the middle of the field. Uh, we've also done granular fertilizers, beneficial insects, and pollen, as I mentioned earlier. Now, a big innovation that we're just rolling out is our mix and fill system. So what this does is an autonomous loading. So rather than having the operator mixing up chemicals in the field as you're reloading, we've designed a system that can do that automatically. And you can see it going from concept to execution. That's actually one of our, our units right there that's uh, ready to rock and roll. Uh, the thing that it does there, reducing your refill time increases the amount of time the drone is in the air. And that's really important for productivity. So that takes your productivity from 14 acres an hour up to 23. And then additionally, we can be very, very flexible with what we want to apply. Typically, you're going out and applying one thing on a field. So if you've got a weed and an insect problem and you want an adjuvant for the herbicide, but not necessarily the insecticide, you're just mixing all of that into one batch and spraying over the whole thing. What we can do is put the insecticide where the insects are, the herbicide where the weeds are, bring an adjuvant, add that in if you want it or not. You don't have to have it everywhere if you want it on the edges of the field for drift control. If you don't want to use it in the middle of the field because you're not as concerned about drift issues, that's fine too. We can be really, really flexible. And the mix and fill will do that all autonomously, communicating wirelessly with Bluetooth between the drone, the filling station, and the app that, uh, that controls everything. We're also selling trailers. Uh, so what this can do, put everything that you need in one easy to use package. So you've got the, all the drones, you can have multiple drones, charging station, the mix and fill, storage area, water tanks, chemical storage, workspace, you name it. That'll all go inside a trailer that, uh, that we can sell for you. And we're, we've sold a couple of these, uh, working on different and upgraded versions and, uh, and continuing to roll those out uh, in the very near future. So we're, as I said, operating in multiple states. Uh, you can see every state that has a large logo, we've got uh, permission there. The small ones are actually where we have operators. So we're ramping this up um, uh, very aggressively. We're going into Ohio next, uh, looking at Missouri and Kansas, Tennessee. Uh, we've hit a big chunk of the ag states in the Midwest. And then also we're in California, adding another operator and closer to Northern California and then uh, expanding from there. But we're really happy about our, our expansion. We believe that we were the first company to be licensed uh, in multiple states and uh, we're just adding on to that lead right now. We couldn't do this without lots of partners. Uh, obviously, Sony is a big one. We're really happy to work with them and we appreciate what they're doing in terms of quick, uh, quick response, being able to gather that information really fast in the field. Uh, that's excellent and when we, we really like that. Uh, there's other partners that we're working with as well uh, to gather imagery, to build our units, work on the pollen side, work with different chemicals, utilize the drones in a better way to do this. We're very open uh, when it comes to, to partnerships because not, not every, no, no one company has all the solutions and so we need to, to work with all of them.
We do have a pretty strong team. Uh, my background is chemistry and venture capital. Majority of our team has a lot of ag experience, uh, whether it's Mike doing consulting for deer, David in ag sales, uh, and others that were a pretty broad base. And then Caleb is a good one to bring up. He's one of four people in the country that's certified to train and, and support uh, the drone units that we're using. So we've had a lot of success in the past, uh, some re nice recognition, which has been, been pretty good to see. We're much more excited for the future as we're actually out in the field applying multiple substances in multiple locations for different customers, understanding what their needs are, and then tailoring those unique solutions to them. We're, we're really excited about the future of this, and uh, it's, been, it's been a heck of a run, and we're just getting started. So with that, I will wrap up and say you're welcome to visit us at um, rantizo.com. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at, at Rantizo Sprays is our Twitter handle. And then one thing that we're doing as a, a promotion for this, we'd like to come out to your field and do a demonstration. We've done lots of demos in and around Iowa and the Midwest. Uh, we've done a, a fair number in Tennessee, and we're trying to find people in other areas of the, of the country that are wanting a demonstration. And uh, we'd really like the, the chance to do that. So if you tweet about us and tag us, you know, mention at Rantizo Sprays, and Sony, tell us what's an interesting thing that we can go solve in your field, and we'll pick one of those and go do a demo for you. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank so, you. Yep. Okay, so the um, going to give you some more information um, of the um, Sony solution. Uh, so um, the I already have the question on this uh, question. The how how much is the solution? Um, the so the cameras of this uh, most Spectra camera is the three thousand five hundred dollars, and then the software. The um, we have two plans: standard and business. Uh, and the standard is a nine 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 uh, per year, and the business is the one nine 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 per year. And the quick difference of this the plan is the so the acre size you can cover is the uh, for standard is up to 1,000 acres and for business is up to 15,000 acres if you have more coverage please contact us and the uh, and count or prescription those kind of this the uh, function uh, is available for the business plan so that's a um, brief difference of the plan and if you're interested in, then the uh, you can purchase the uh, the cameras the, from our certified system integrators. It, it, they are our dealers, uh, so they they sell these the cameras with the drones, uh, the uh, necessary if necessary. And the software, uh, if you click this software on our website and then they click purchase, then they um, leads you to this the Sony license web store. And the um, additional information uh, is so we just started to launch this Sony Smart Agriculture Academy. Uh, this is the online training program uh, to provide uh, all this the necessary tutorial information for your operation. Uh, so if you enroll that, then you are uh, you have access to the uh, online operation tutorial videos. Um, how to fly the drones and how to process the software, uh, how to do sound count, all these things are going to be available here. And this one, uh, you can also download uh, the video. We know there's a lot of people uh, operating in the field, so the, um, you can download uh, the video for the offline use for the uh, reference in the field. It's completely free of charge, so the, uh, the please. Uh, enroll uh, if you're interested in. And the uh, webinar archives, so we made a couple of other webinars Then the uh, each webinar has the different guest speaker talking about different use case or different uh, the solution. Um, the, if you are drone service providers, the, uh, the this uh, webinars, the talk about this, the how, to utilize this solution to leverage your drone service provider business. Um, this webinar, uh, the Syngenta uh, was the guest speakers, and then they are talking about the Syngenta leaf land calculator for the corn. Um, so uh, they, they made a nice demonstration of this uh, solution. 
and the if you're thinking of the um, flight operation uh, demo, how this flight operation can be, then uh, this uh, the webinar uh, the we have the uh, guest speaker from Drone Made Easy uh, who provide this the flight uh, operation software, and they are making the demonstration. And if you are interested in uh, evaluating the software, uh, then uh, you go to our website and then you have the uh, free trial uh, so you can uh, the evaluate the software with a sample data set. Now, with that, the, uh, all the information um, is delivered. So we'd like to move to the question and answer session. So let me check. Uh, the question. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for a lot of questions. Okay, so the first question is, is talking about sun count things. Okay. Uh, what crop uh, can you use for the sun count? So this sun count, um, the, a lot of the users are used for corn. And the uh, also this uh, cotton uh, is uh, the confirmed, and then the uh, and also the soy. Uh, so those kind of things uh, you can use it. And the uh, basically uh, this sand count system works if this the plant is where well, seed is planted in row, and the plant is not overlapped from one to another. So uh, if it's in row and plant is individually um, isolated from one to another, then uh, this counting uh, would work. Uh, okay, the sound count question. Um, so for soybean, what stage um, of the crop does it work? Um, so the for soybean, yes, the soybean counting is I think is um, just starting, and the um, so soybean from VC stage to B two stage, uh, the is the recommended uh, the timing uh, for the sun count. Not uh, the questions. Um, the, what altitude are we flying for sun count? Um, so we recommend what we recommend is the 50 feet uh, for the sun count. Okay, uh, we have a couple of basically spraying things. Uh, what kind of the license is required for drone spraying operation? Maybe this is a question to Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to spray legally from a drone, you need three things. First is a part 107, which is very easily obtained. You can study for that and get it. Second is a state applicator license, which also, again, is very easy. Do the studying and take whatever your state test is. And Rantizo has a list of all the states and all their requirements all set up. So those are the two things that are easy to get. The third thing that's relatively hard is a 137. And that comes from the FAA and is actually granted to a company. And uh, Rantizo has that. And with training, we can extend that to you. So there's three three things, the 107 state applicator and then the 137, which we have. And when we train you, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that to you. Okay. And this is also the spraying part. Um, what crop uh, would be the most if or this the drone spraying uh, would work most effectively? Uh, we have found that we can spray pretty much anything. So we've had success, corn, soybeans, wheat, berries, hemp, cannabis, vineyard grapes. Uh, later this year, we'll be doing spinach, lettuce, tomatoes. Uh, about the only thing that we couldn't do i think it would be hops because those are on a on a string that go up like 30 feet and you can't get in between them but anything that you can access 
you can basically get into and uh, we, we can get into actually special situations really well so a side hill a hard to reach area some place that there's been you know problems getting into it maybe it's washed out getting there uh, we can we can fly right over the top of just about anything we've also done uh, other applications like uh, spraying it over a dam like when uh, there was weed growth on a dam and they wanted us to fly over the water and spray there we did that we sprayed on solar panels and also in between solar panels so you can spray and wash them off and then also spray uh, something to get rid of the weeds in between the panels so the weeds don't grow up and uh, and, and block the panel so there's a, a very wide range of of things that you can do with it um, and not just crop related and sanitization is a good example of that where we can spray a sanitizing chemical inside a warehouse inside a stadium over top of a football stadium or a baseball field that all works really well okay um so next question is i'm from ohio are there any grants available to start a drone spraying business um, michael uh, we are not aware of grants that, that you have to, to start a business. We can set you up with financing. Uh, we've got partner lenders that, uh, that we can get, get you up and, and moving with that. Um, and so just reach out to us, you know, look at, uh, you can tweet about us at Rantizo Sprays, or you can send, um, I know my email is on that, that slide that, um, that, that you can display. It's, it's my last name, Ott at Rantizo.com. There we go. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can reach out from our website as well. So there's lots of ways to get a hold of us. Okay. Uh, another question for spraying. Is it still possible to use drone with herbicide that require upwards to 10 gallon per acre? Sure. So we always spray at the aerial rate. And so most chemicals will have a ground rate and an aerial rate. So uh, we, we apply on label using the, the aerial rate. You can do, we can do two, three or five as kind of our wheelhouse that we do really well at. We can do 10 gallon an acre work. That's probably going to be a smaller field uh, just because your productivity will, will go down a little bit as you increase the, the application rate. But you certainly could do 10, 20 or 40. Uh, you just get, get lower productivity. Uh, but the vast majority of, of chemicals are applied at the aerial rate, which is two, three, or five. Okay, thank you. And another one is for the spraying drone, what is the recharge time on the batteries? What's the sure. cost of an additional battery? Yep, so you'll go out in the field with six or eight batteries, depending how big of a project you're looking at. And then the batteries will deplete in six to 14 minutes, depending on a wide range of factors. Uh, so you'll go through them uh, relatively quickly. Put them on a charger that takes about 45 minutes to reload on the charger. So you know, that's why you need multiple batteries when you're out there. So you have a generator, charger, six to eight batteries, and then, uh, and then it'll work work through that way. We have all that workflow uh, figured out and detailed and we can share that with our contractors so so they're aware of it. A battery is about $650 and it'll get you 300 cycles if you use it, um, if you slow charge it every time, which is what we recommend. Okay. Uh, next question is, how long does it take to capture 160 acres of NDVI data with your cameras and drone? This is um, for Sony. Um, so uh, it all depends on the state drone capability. Um, the with Phantom 4, I think 160 acre is the the maybe the maximum limit uh, we can cover at 400 feet flight per battery. Um, so uh, this is assuming that all this uh, the wind condition is very stable and things. So um, the basically 400 feet flight, approximately 15 minutes flight uh, can cover this 160 acres. And the Phantom 4, that's maximum you can cover per battery. Uh, if the wind is there, maybe the, you need to fly twice uh, swapping the batteries. 
and with the matrice type of the larger uh, enterprise drones, you can cover uh, something like more, more than 200, 250 acres of flight. So you can easily cover this 160 acres per battery. Okay. Um, so next one is what pesticide can be applied? I'm assuming that you need to use ULV. Can you spray wettable powder? It's for Michael. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we definitely can spray wettable powders. Uh, anything that has an aerial rate, we can apply. So it, it's it's pretty wide open um, for for most herbicides. Wettable powders work. Uh, we did that the first time and discovered the the benefits of filters, which in retrospect we should have figured out beforehand. Uh, we got clogged up a lot, uh, but then having those dissolved uh, over time and then uh, and then just using filters. Uh, saved us some some issues, but those are those are the lessons you learn when you're the first person to do something that uh, become obvious after the fact. Uh, but that that did work really well for us uh, uh, later in the year last year. Okay. Uh, next question is: Can Sony software also create a field boundary? Uh, we have many uh, terraces and windmill roads that needs to be cut out of the application prescription. Yes, um, so fast field analyzer, you can uh, the manually uh, create uh, the field boundary. Um, so there, there are two ways to define the field boundary. One is manual, uh, it's just a mouse clicking uh, the areas you like to define. Uh, so multi-polygon uh, field boundary you can generate, or you can import this uh, field boundary uh, files like shape files or GeoJSON file from other applications. Uh, yes, so that's the question. And the back other uh, question here. Um, okay. So how can the prescriptions generated in SSA be utilized by the sprayer drone? Um, so this is maybe the question for Sony and then right of both. Um, so the Sony SSA can generate the prescription file as a shape file, and then we pass it over to run TISO system and run TISO systems the uh, the refer uh, this the prescription information to decide which area to apply the pesticide or sprayer uh, to, to spray. So that that's how it works. Yep. It, yeah, and for us, uh, the shapefile integration uh, is. It, it, it works right now and it's becoming more native to the system for, for Antizo, where when you've got a shape file, you basically use that as an input to map out the areas, the application rate, the height, all the other details that, that need to be put in there. And then we can use pretty much any open shape file uh, that, that, that'll work well with our system. And so it, you'll just go through and go from spot one, two, three, four, all the way through uh, until it's done. The drone will know when it runs out of pesticide. So it'll mark that spot and then go back, reload, and then uh, return to the, uh, to the spot where it ran out and, and continue from there. Okay. And the, um, here have tests been done for crops in greenhouse of floricultures or horticulture, tomato, bell peppers, those things. Um, so these cameras, the um, we haven't tested with this uh, greenhouse environment. Um, the this could work, but then we, we haven't tested these things yet. Um, next question for the field boundaries. With the manual field 
border creation, how accurate is it? Three feet accuracy spray next to a 20 feet tall terrace could create an issue that caused Tron to stop. Um, sure. So, yeah. oh, go, go ahead. Is there any more? No, no, you, you can comment. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, we have a standard our standard GPS, which is accurate to three feet, and RTK, which is accurate to one inch. So the, and th that's how close the drone will be to where you intend it to be at all times. Uh, then what you'll do with precise mapping is go up and, and spray to the area that you that you desire. We can spray in any orientation, like any of 360 degrees, we can change it around. So you can change it based on the wind. If you wanna be going at 90 degrees to the wind, if you wanna go at 90 degrees to the slope, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, that flexibility in there will change how that how that works. So um, we can use the capability to fly in any orientation uh, very well for for what we're trying to do. So uh, we'll keep a constant height over the crop, and we can set that height at whatever you want it to be. It can be as low as four feet. It could be up. You could go as high as 20. We don't recommend that because you get uneven spraying at 20 feet. Usually four to eight feet is uh, typically where you'll be. Okay. Um, another question uh, is, question is in regard to creation of the broader map, a border map. Uh, for this the maybe uh we pull up offline the um i think i hear the specific detail um that question so the uh we, we will follow up the offline um another comment here is the so this is for my question is for michael i have been in contact with your uh, colleague uh, about being a custom applicator for rantizo and i'm wondering about timing for starting this season I live in Indiana, just north of Purdue in West Lafayette. I'm really interested in adding on to my drone business and getting on board with you guys. Uh, what is your thought? Sure, yeah, reach out to me. My email address is on the screen right now, ott at rantizo.com. We will get you set up and ready to rock and roll. We've got one operator in Indiana and looking to expand to, to many more. Uh, there, there's it's a great agricultural state, and uh, we're we're ready to ready to to roll there. Okay, thank God that's it. The most of the questions, and the uh, now uh, if you need further information, then uh, please contact uh, the directory to us. Uh, for Sony Matters, the, uh, I'll be the contact, and then the, uh, for the drone spray and Rantito Solution Matters, the Michael uh, will be the contact. And the, uh, with that, now the time is just two o'clock now. So uh, with that, we close the session. And now the, before uh, you leave, the, we are going to have this the, post, uh, the webinar survey. It's just a quick uh, the couple of the clicks you need. So please uh, just give us feedback, uh, and then we can improve this webinar for future. Uh, so thank you very much. And then thank you very much for Michael for the great presentations and the question and answer. And thank you very much for everybody uh, joining the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you.